17, start there. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Can, I, can we show him? Hold it, hold it so he can see it. I want him to see it. This is the king. I just want y'all to see. Right? It's the King James Bible right here. What did, what did Christ say? Read. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Christ said, think not that he come to destroy the law. So when we in church, right? I grew up in church. I'm going to calm it down because I, you know, out of respect because I do respect my elders. I grew up in church. Young. Right? Grandmother. Right? She told me to listen to the words of the Bible. So when I, when I got older and I started reading the words of the Bible, I said, well, Granny, he said, think not. What did he say? Read. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. He said, I didn't think to come to destroy, meaning to kill it off, right? What did he say, read? I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you. So when you read it in Luke, the account in Luke says he come to fulfill the things that was written of him, which we know he was prophesied to come, die for, for our sins, right? So he said, I didn't come to get rid of anything. I came to fulfill what was written of me. And what did he say? Watch this, read. Till heaven and earth pass. One shot or one tittle. So he said, till heaven and earth pass. So heaven and earth. He said, not one jot or tittle. That's a small thing. Read. Shall in no wise pass from the law. He said, nothing shall pass from the law until heaven and earth pass. But we still see heaven here. We still see earth here. This is the words of Christ. What did he say? Read. Till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these commandments. Christ said, whoever break one of these commandments. So I'm going to give you an example, like the Ten Commandments, right? We, we keep the Ten Commandments, right? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, right? Love, your honor, your mother and father, right? The Fourth Commandment is keep the Sabbath holy. That's the Fourth Commandment. But, um, but before you, I think, I don't know if you guys heard, but before we was actually showing in the Bible that after Jesus died, once Jesus died, they still went to church on, Sun, on Saturday, on the Sabbath. They read the prophets every sab uh, Saturday. Did you guys hear when we brought that out? Yeah. They read it every every Saturday. And when you actually do the uh, research and you find out, well, where did we get Sunday from? Sunday was actually instituted by the Roman Catholic Church under Emperor Constantine. You can Google it on your phone right now and see. When did Sunday worship be established? Because they never worshipped him as a whole and went to church as a whole on Sunday. Never. That was a new thing that they did. That's why when you read in the book of Daniel, when it says he, he shall think to change times and laws. Right? Can you get that for me? I think that's Daniel 9. The Bible tell, told you that there will be an antichrist in the last days that will think to change God's laws. So when you look at that, the Roman Catholic Church, they said, no, 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 no. Sunday is going to be the day that all everybody worships now. And the Council of uh, Nicaea, there were two councils that took place where we get our uh, traditions from today in Christianity. Modernized Christianity. Because when people say, well, you're not Christian, I am Christian because I do believe in Christ. But the practices that we're doing today are not right according to the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Because Jesus said, keep the commandments, right? Now, finish that off. Hold that. Read. Therefore, and shall teach man so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Give me John 14, 15. So, my name is uh, Rob Cezanne, um, but if you have any questions... Feel free. We really out here to be respectful. We not out here to be disrespectful. So if you want to say something, I'll listen to you. You had a floor. Because what I wanted you guys to do was to come challenge what I'm saying too. Maybe, maybe I can, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. You know? So, nah, I can't go in there. They not teaching on the right day of God. Huh? Because I've been in there. I used to, I've been in this church a couple times when I was a Christian. I, I was in the youth department in this church. It was so much wickedness going on in the youth department, I thought I was at a club. i am be honest. I seen people that I went to school with up in here. I'm like, what you doing here? I really believed that. I was really trying to do it. I was a minister at 14. I used to go in here. I went in here a couple times. Seen people that I, um, my, my old barber, his name was Mr. Nolan. He's a faithful member that goes here. He used to cut my hair down on 84th. He, I used to call him my spiritual grand, grandfather. He used to take me uh, up here every Sunday, um, not every Sunday, but a couple Sundays I would come in, be in here with him. Youth department and all of that. They were doing so much wickedness in the youth department. I was like, is this church? What is this? You see what I'm saying? So I've been in there, brother. I've been in there a couple times. Matter of fact, I've been so deep in the church, I didn't, ch I didn't, I didn't talk to uh, 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 Fred Price. I met Fred Price. 
talk to Fred Price. You know, Fred Price actually knows that the Israelites were black, right? He had a whole, I remember back in the day on TBN, he had a whole special showing that the people of the Bible was black. He got kicked off of TBN for doing it. You remember that? I don't know if you remember that. He had a special. Look it up. You can YouTube it. Matter of fact, before y'all leave, I could give I could give you, I forgot the series. He had a whole series showing how the people of the book was actually black people. This is Fred Price. My grandmother and them used to watch Fred Price faithfully. I used to have to sit at the foot of the bed and watch him preach. And I ain't gonna lie, Fred Price was, I, I, res, I respect him for bringing out that much. He did. He brought out the truth. And I'm telling you that he got kicked off of TBN for doing that. He got, he got um, um, in trouble f with TBN a couple of times for doing certain things. You understand? But that should let you know right there. Well, something ain't right because if he's bringing out the Bible, why is he getting in trouble? Because it doesn't go with the tradition. So all we're doing is we're challenging the traditions that we've been taught since children. You understand? That's all we that's all we doing is challenging the early traditions. Like I was showing them that Christmas, right? I'm gonna just example, another one, another big one actually, Christmas. Was Jesus born on December twenty fifth? Then who was? That's you, you know. I, you say so. <laughs> was Jesus born on December 25th? Let's ask that. Maybe I don't know, but I want to ask you, was Jesus born on December 25th? No, because when you read the story about when he was in a manger, it says that the sheep and all of that, they was out there grazing and all of that, right? How could you, and, and it snows in Jerusalem, it get cold. If it was the winter, how could any animals be <laughs> doing anything grazing and all that? And then even with the North Star, that star does not come out. That star comes in the, in the springtime. Christ was born around spring, around Passover. You understand? So when we say, well, December 25th, well, where did we get that custom from? Who was really born on December 25th? If you really look it up, it, you'll be Nimrod. It's a, it, Nimrod was a Babylonian god. December 25th. He had a, uh, a sexual relationship with his mother and had a son called Tammuz. When Nimrod died, they said that his spirit went into, this is real, his spirit went into the trees. This is why on Christmas we cut the tree, put it in. You ask yourself, what is a tree? Yeah, we're going to read it in the Bible too. What does a tree have to do with God? Let's see where they got that from. What's what the Bible says? This is, this, is what, this is what shattered my foundation as a Christian. And I couldn't ignore it. And I don't want to take too much of you guys' time, but I'll just show you this last thing. I couldn't ignore it. When I read this stuff, I couldn't ignore it because I, I really went, wanted to know God for myself. She knows already. She knows already. Yeah. In, in, uh, in the book of Jeremiah 10, it says that. Yeah, let's, she, right, she already know. They already know. That's why they stopped because I, I knew they had to know something because, you know, they stopped. So, all praises to God for that, Read Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the ways of the heathen. Says this, so, this is the ways of the heathen, first off, right, Read. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Which they worship the stars and the moon, right, Read. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. They do vain customs, Read. For one cut if a tree out of the forest. Like you said, mama, one cut if a tree out of the forest, read. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Uh -huh. They deck it with silver and with gold. You put lights on it, put little ornaments on it, put a star on the top, read. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it will not move. And we put the little thing at the bottom, the base, so it won't move. And then we put presents under it. You know those presents symbolize we actually giving an offering to the tree. And when we bow down to get those presents, go get the tr uh, presents from under the tree. We're bowing down and paying homage to the tree. Now ask yourself, where the milk and cookies come from? The milk and cookies is a burnt and a meat offering that you used to give to God. So when you leave out the milk and cookies for Santa, you see, and ain't, ain't Santa Satan, when you switch, switch when you switch the words around, <laughs> they telling you. That, that, so now, when I look at this church, this mega church who we're giving our money to to preach us the truth of God, and they're not bringing none of this out, and they are keeping us in these traditions, I gotta question whether they really my spiritual guide or guiders or not. And then I gotta go to this real quick, Matthew twenty-five. Yes, sir. Yeah, 
Yeah, well answer, that's a real good question. Actually, when I when I first found, I'ma just be honest and give my testimony. Just all other stuff aside, like I'ma be so truthful with you. When I first found this information out, I was excited, you know? Like I was really like, man, like we actually been doing stuff wrong. We gotta switch some things. And I, I actually believe that I can actually within the church help change some things. And I, I went to pastor after pastor. I talked to pastors and different things like that to try to get them to see this. One of the main things I tried to get them to see was that we are really not Gentiles. We're actually Jews according to this book. That was one of the main things. Cause I was excited when I found out. This is King James right here. Yeah, I know a lot about King James. He was a he was a king. He was actually a good. No, not at all. No. That lie actually came out about him. Yeah, by uh, what's his what's his name? Um, uh, Anthony Weldon. That's his name. Anthony Weldon. He actually wrote the the court and character of King James, where he actually talks about King James being homosexual and all of that. Right. If you actually do the um, read the history on King James, that was actually fabricated. That was actually something that was written like ten years after his death. The reason why Anthony Weldon did this was because he was expelled from the court of King James because Anthony Weldon was actually the one doing uh, homosexual practices. I'm going to give you an example. King James himself, he didn't write this book, he translated it, but King, ja King James has books that he actually wrote. It's a book called the Basilicon Duran, which is, means kingly gift. It's a book that he wrote to his son, in that, that he him himself wrote to his son, right? Uh, what's his name? Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, Charles, Charles, I think it's Charles Stewart is his son's name, right? But he wrote this to his son, and he told his son basically the character of a king. And everything that King James wrote down was according to this. Be righteous. Don't be. It goes against everything that Anthony Weldon wrote after King James' death. Because Anthony Weldon wanted to tarnish King James' image. Now, the reason why Anthony Weldon's writings got published and put out there was because the Roman Catholic Church also was an enemy of King James'. That's why when you look at the gunpowder plot or Guy Fox, they tried to assassinate King James a number of times. When you watch that movie V from Vendetta, that movie is actually a movie dealing with how they tried to assassinate King James. So they tried to kill him. So when Anthony Weldon wrote what he wrote, the Catholic Church, which is evil, put that out there and published it for the world to see it because they, didn't, they were mad at King James for making him his own translation of the Bible because they, had, they were keeping the Bibles and killing a lot of people for having Bibles at that time. So, so, go ahead. Yeah. Mm I'm going to just say this. Let me just say this too. A lot of our brothers that come in this knowledge, they come hard. We don't come that hard because we understand that there has to be a balance. So you have in any any faction that you have, you're going to have somebody that's a little harder and somebody that's a little softer. Unfortunately, in New York, they just that's how New York New Yorkers are. They <laughs> they hard in New York. I mean, I know you know. You know, we come with our own spin to the truth. It's still what they saying is still right, but Maybe their approach needs to be a little better. And I, I agree with that. That's why I'm respecting you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great speaker. Yeah, we've been, we, yeah, we've been yeah, everywhere. Yeah, 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 we've been every, yeah, we've been over there. Yeah. But if we could get the voices and get them together, that's the only thing. 
that's the key. Um, I wanted to show you something real quick. Give me uh, Matthew 22. Because unfortunately, like when you read the words of this book, um, how can I say this? The words of this book tell us that everybody's not going to make it, right? Tells you that only um, the multitude will be go to destruction and the narrow find the light. So unfortunately, how you doing, King? Everybody is not going to see it. And I learned that the hard way when I was in the church and I tried to bring this to the church and I got X'd out. You know, now let's, what's that? What you got? Let me see. Yeah, I want to just, nah, not that one. Uh, uh, broad is the way to destruction. I want that one. Where's that at? I think it's Matthew 20, go to 24. Let me see if it's Matthew 24. Let me get this for the elder real quick. Uh, um, let's see. I don't want that. Uh, I think it's 25. Let me see. Hey, if somebody could get that on their phone real quick. Um, I want the scripture where it says broad is the way to destruction. That's the one I want. I want to get that one real quick. And you hold this because I want you to get Matthew 24 for him real quick. I'm trying to hurry up. So give me that one. And then let's read this. So for, for now, we'll read this. Yeah, we'll read 24. 20, but I want the one he's getting to. Matthew 24 and verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ. So the Bible already said there's going to arise false Christ. Right? Read. And false prophets. And shall show great signs and wonders. Great signs and wonders are shown all throughout particular Christian churches. Yeah, hold that. Great signs and wonders are certain. They come in the name of Christ. But now, like you said, are they doing the works of Christ? So if they're not doing the works of Christ, but they come in the name of Christ, that means that they're antichrist. Watch, read what it say, read. And so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. It said that they're going to be so persuading, so believable. It said that even the special chosen people that are chosen, they might deceive them. <laughs> you know? So it's no way we're going to all be able to come together with these antichrists out here. Because they're always like a brother came and told us to shut up and all of that. Right? Because it's church. So, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get it. The Bible says it already. That's what makes this book so dynamic and so powerful because it already said that it's not going to be good. Now, but let me read this last thing, Rick. Book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Broad is the way. Look, look at this. It's only one, two, three, four, five, six. It's only a handful of jakes. It says broad is the way to destruction. The church is one. If this scripture was true, then that means we got to think about something. Because the Bible says that everybody not going to flock to the truth. So how was everybody in the world Christians? That don't make sense. That, that already right there don't make sense. Because watch what it say, read. And many there be which go into their at. It says many go into destruction. Right, read. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leads into life, and few there be that find it. So right then and there, this right here can't be true because Christianity is one of the biggest religions in the world. So that uh, light bulb should think, hold on. According to the Bible, it says that there are going to be many antichrists. They're not teaching the words of God, like you said, and mama knows. And then on top of that, it says broad is the way to destruction, and many go there, and narrow is the way of life, and few find it. The church, Christianity is the biggest religion under Catholicism, probably. Read one more. Now. Uh, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly there are raving wolves. And so beware of false prophets. So to answer your question, purposely, because even Christ said, I speak in parables so that they don't understand. It's only a chosen elect that's chosen to find this. Everybody not going. Because remember it says in the last days, it said, many shall come to my name saying, Christ, Christ. And he shall say, I knew you. I don't know you. Get away from me. So somebody, you, somebody lying and somebody wrong. So, go ahead.
Because the same Christianity that we teach today is the same Christianity that they taught us on them slave plantations. Same book. The exact same book. And we read in verbatim, yeah, the same book that's in there. Yeah. Yep, the same book. So that means that I would love to sit down and, and really read it. Like, that's why I said maybe I'm, maybe you can show me something that I'm wrong in, in here. I'm, I'm humble. I'm not prideful. I don't, because I, I know I read this daily, as you know. I read this book daily and I'm very, um, I'm very, uh, I stand by these words because these words have changed my life drastically. You know, I'm a young man in South Central LA and I really decided to keep these words. I got a family now, I got beautiful children, I got a wife, I deal righteously with my wife. You understand? You know, I, t I train my kids, I, my kids are very smart. Reading at two years old, my kids, I, my kids are, I am, they way smarter than me when I was young. I grew up in a bad way. I, I kind of was in a rough path at first. But then I really started to see God. I really wanted to know who he was. So I started going to church, obviously. My grandma would make me go to church when I was younger. But then I started to say, you know what, by, about 10th grade, I was like, you know what, let me, I want to go and listen. And that's what I did. And I listened and I, I read and I tried to understand for myself. And I realized that we're not doing what the book that we say we believe in tells us to do. So I would love to go in there or go in the men's study and talk to them about this and have a discussion not an argument a discussion you know i know we be loud and we be passionate but when you come talk to us we're not rude or disrespectful you know so i would i would love to have any discussion but um uh you know a discussion i don't want nobody to be mad at me you know because <laughs> i've had that i've been thrown out of church before <laughs> i've i've went to my, my as a matter of fact the church that I was actually doing service in, me and the pastor got into a, a big argument, big argument, and uh, I haven't talked to him in years. And this could be, oh yes, yeah, okay. And this could be all cameras off, just between us and them, or me and a couple brothers and them. We come in peace. We'll even come in our regular clothes. We ain't even got to come all militant. <laughs> you know? Okay. Okay. Well, I brought uh, my my tight car now with most of the brother. And they weren't very kind to challenge the challenge. But Your Muslim brother wasn't kind or they weren't? Yeah. I didn't go to the secret time. Right. I've been to the mosque. I've been um I know Alfonso brother Alfonso, I know a couple of Muslim brothers. I've been I've been to their establishments a couple of times. They know who we are as well. But that's the thing, if I come, I don't wanna be disrespectful because I know that's they that's their house. So if I come, I just want to be, them, be talk, have a discussion. Uh, Ratazan. Yes. You remember when we were watching the videos of Farrakhan? And Farrakhan was talking about uh, Christianity and Jesus. And I told you there's a backstory. You remember? I never told you what that backstory was. But it's kind of like the backstory to what's going on with what you're talking about uh -huh. and what's going on in
wisdom. Let it ride in order for them to hear you. And once they hear you and they accept small bites like baby food, you feed them milk until you're able to eat meat. Mm -hmm. See, Minister Farrakhan really believes that Christianity is the slave man's religion that was given to us to make us subservient right. to the white man. That's what he really believes Christianity is. But if he said that out loud to the masses, he says it to his view behind doors who all know and agree with him. But if he got on a platform like this church, like he does to hundreds of thousands of people and said that, most of them would walk out because we are so indoctrinated into this Christianity and this Jesus. Right. And so when you say the mega churches, why do they read this Bible but they do something else okay. based on tradition or whatever? It's because tradition is what has in what's the word? Train them. Yeah, indoctrination. Yeah, as a child. That's the word. Yeah. So, so you you can't get to people if you just try and take everything away from them. So he chops away at it. That's the backstory. Because Minister Farcon, he he believes that same thing. Uh, Fred Price said. I believe that everything in the Bible is truly stated, which means somebody said it. Mm -hmm. But I don't really believe that everything in there is true. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, you have to just feed people what they can take. And as they come along, then you can take them aside and give them more and separate them from the people who are still the baby. Food. Yeah. That's that's wisdom. I'm going I'm to I'm be honest with you. That's wisdom. Um, the reason why, because like I was telling my elder, um, we understand that I, basically we don't do it for numbers per se. Like, so when we come strong, like we come, it's not to really get people to follow us because we know that Jesus didn't do it like that. You know, he, he taught the people and gave them, he said he was a steward, man. Um, we do come in those ways too, but we do come hard and I'm going to show you why we do. Real quick, um, but you're absolutely correct in what you were saying, but I'm going to show you why we do what we're doing out here. So you can know it's not just us coming out here to try to take people from that church because we know we're not going to do that. I, here's the word. That, that thing that gets their attention, yeah. you know, yeah. because that's what my mother taught me. She said, uh, I had a lot of questions about the Bible growing up. Yeah. I grew up church of God in Christ. Uh -huh. I had a lot of questions. And sometimes they, the thing sounded so far-fetched to me, it didn't make sense. My mother said, don't worry about that. Yeah. Take what you can get, and whatever you can, she said, let it let. Yeah. Don't worry about it. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But there's good principles in here. What you... There's good training in here. It is, yeah. You know, but even if, if, if you look at the, mm -hmm. the story of the fox and the... the the rabbit or the rabbit and the tortoise you know who's running faster who's moving slow you learn even from the children's stories so there's some good stories in here but i'm sorry to say and i'm not so sorry to say that that's not the only way i, I used to i don't believe yeah. that that book is the only way to god I, yeah it can't be because there's too many people too many countries too many religions, too many different cultures. God is bigger than that one book, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's fine, because like I said, I, these discussions are, are what we want. You know, we, and you guys are my elders still, so I respect everything. We want to hear why and reasonings for things. I'm going to show you that. This book, I'm going to show you something. I never realized the power in this book. Until I start really reading it for the understanding, I'm gonna I'm be honest. Christianity has given this book a bad name. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just be honest with you. Christianity has done this book, like has not really pulled out the power of this book. This is the only book I'm gonna be honest with you. 
that will say something and it has come to pass. And I'm not talking about something like all people will die. We know that. Right. What I'm saying is this book tells you, I'm going I'm to show you one thing in this book that you probably have heard, you probably haven't, but I'm going to show you one thing and, and, and show you. But I want him to get this first. You get Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you something. Why the, this book is powerful and better than every other book. Better than the Quran. Better than, because even Farrakhan, he reads the Bible a lot. The Quran, if you go back into history, because we say Christianity is a slave religion, which is true. Islam is too. Because do you know about the history of the Islamic expansion? That's when Prophet Muhammad was forcing people, killing people. If you ain't a Muslim, you dying. And enslave people under the name of Allah. That's history you cannot, and 622 is when that religion started, and it started based off of the principles of this book, because he knew that he was an Ishmaelite, according to the Bible, which is the seed of Abraham, and they felt, the Arabs felt some type of power from that. So they created their Quran, and they wanted the Jews that were in that region to convert, and the Jews that were in that region didn't convert. They said, no, we don't convert to that. We have our own history. This is before it was called a Bible. This is when it was just... It was just, uh, yeah, when it, um, um, Codex. it was after, it, it was called Codex, it was called Papyrus, you know, different things like that. This is before King James came, but they still had the oral, they still had their, their, their history pretty much, right? So what happened was Prophet Muhammad, and you can look this up, he actually tried to convert, and this is where you get the holy wars from, because then you had the Roman Catholic Church, and then you got the... Islamic expansion and now they they're 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 uh, clashing because they're fighting for their religion that they created based off of the history Let's not even say Bible because the Bible wasn't there yet it, it was it was the words of that but it wasn't called the Bible I'm gonna say the history of the Jews that's what everybody wanted that's the key when you understand the Jews that's what brings Islam in Christian and makes it make sense and that's what I researched and found out the truth now I'm gonna show you something right let's read this real quick let me show you something real quick. I like this dialogue too, and I want to. I want. I want to ask you after I show you this. What do you think about what I showed you too? Watch this, read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-eight, verse one. Cry out loud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. So that's why we do what we do based off of this scripture. It says, spare not, cry out loud. So this is why we got a mic and. Because this is what the Bible tells us to do And it says spare not Meaning it doesn't When you read uh, a meaning Don't worry about what they feel When you read the book of Ezekiel It also tells you Don't don't be afraid He told Ezekiel Don't be afraid of them You go tell them what I tell you to say No matter if they agree with you or not So that's why we do this Right So that's the first reason why we do this it, It's not so much We wish everybody would leave out of there And come follow us But that's a dream <laughs> So we're not doing it for that We're doing it for you People who would stop and talk to us And really get us to understand Now so that's that so now let me show you why this book is powerful more than any other book. I'm going to show you something. What happened to black people in history as a nation of people that changed us forever? What was a, a, a point in history that happened to us? We lost our education. Slavery, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So let me show you what this says, right? This this is what this is what blew me away. Actually read Deuteronomy 28 and 1 first. Real quick. And I want you to tell me what you think about this. Read that. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. Let's actually get to the point and read 15. In verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thy would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So this is when the children of Israel were in Mount Zion and they made a covenant with God. Because like you said, everybody has their own God. Everybody has their own belief system. You're absolutely right. This book is not for everybody. This book is not for the Indians and the Hindus. They have their own gods that they worship. This book is only for the nation of Israel. So I do agree with you on that. He made a covenant and a, a deal with the nation of Israel. When you read verse 1, he says, If you serve me and you worship me, I will make you high above all nations. But if you don't, verse 15 says, I will curse you and bring you low. And then he says this. It's a sign. Uh, that's the one. Uh, it's a sign and a wonder. I need that. 
uh, what verse is that? Is that 30? Read this one right here, 46. Now, he said, these curses will be upon you. And then what did he say? Read. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So it says a sign is something that you can identify something as, right? You got a stop sign, you identify the stop, you know, different signs. So he said that if we, if Israel disrespected the words of God, that these curses will be a sign upon them and their children to let them know and the world know that these are the nation of Israel because these particular curses will happen to them. Now, we know everybody went into slavery, but there was something different with our slavery. And I'm going to read this to you. Now, give me Deuteronomy, uh, you give me 68. Uh, let's read that. You give me 54. I'm going to 68. Read. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Okay, so the scriptures say the Lord will bring Israel. This is one of the curses. It says, I will bring Israel into Egypt again with ships. Now, when you think about geographic, uh, geographical locations, you don't need ships to get from Israel to Egypt. You don't need ships. No, it's just, uh, they walked. You can walk across. You can walk across. Yeah. So, so it's 14 miles away, right? Yeah. So you don't need a ship. But he said, I will bring you into Egypt again with ships. So now we got to understand what does Egypt mean? Because, you know, Egypt was actually not the name. Egypt is a Greek word. But when you read the Bible, Egypt is actually Kemet or before Kemet Mizraim. Um, so let's see what Egypt actually, let's see what he's actually talking about to make sense of this. Read. Just follow me real quick. I got to show you this. Read. Book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So now Egypt, according to the Bible, is referenced as house of bondage because that was the Israelites' first captivity. So Egypt was something that was recognized as bondage. So now let's go back and read it in this proper context. Understanding you don't need ships to go from Egypt to Israel. So we've got to be talking about something else. It's referencing I will bring you back into slavery. What did he say, Read. Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into bondage again with ships. Now it says bondage again with ships. Hmm. Again. again. Bondage again, because we went into Egypt again, right? With ships. When did the Jewish community over in Israel, they never went into bondage on ships. Who did? We, we did. Didn't it say that this will be a sign upon Israel? And nobody else went into slavery on ships as a nation. I'm not talking about here and there. Oh, there were slaves here. No. As a full nation of people taking one people from one continent of the world into a whole other continent on ships for years. Over thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people taking in the ships in slavery on ships. For hundreds of years. 2.6 million. The Bible prophesied that that would happen to Israel. So when I read that, a light bulb went out. Hold on. That only happened to us. And But now, watch what the Bible said what happened. Not only did it give you the detail of ships. This is why this Bible is powerful right here. Because not only did it give you the detail of ships. Look what else it said. Watch this. Read. By the way, whereof I speak unto thee. Thou shall see it no more again. It says you ain't going to go back. It said not only are you going to go into slavery on ships, it says the way of, you ain't going to know how to get back. You ever seen them slave documentaries? They looked out in the ocean. They didn't know where they was at. They didn't know. They was like, I don't know how to navigate back. We don't know where we at. He says you will not go back. Have we went back yet? We still here. What, but watch what it says. As a nation. As a nation. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. We can't go back. But look, 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 this is the Bible. This is the power. Now watch, watch this. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. It's given. This is detail. This is, you're going to be sold on ships. When you get there, once you're not going to go back. And when you get to the place where you're going, then you're going to be sold to your enemies. Auction blocks. 50,000 going once. 50,000 going twice to this one. Yeah, I don't want to keep you too long. This one. Well, I, I 
been here a couple times. Yeah. But you went to school. Yeah, yeah, I've been here. Yeah, I was in the youth. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was in the youth. Yeah. But I was, I, I went to many different churches. But I, I, this was like a popular church to come to. So I've been here. Yeah. I've been here. I came, I came here when I was a teenager. I was, when I came here, I was a teenager. And I was in here. And I went to like youth. I went to uh, summers here. I've been to youth summers here and all that. Here. But I, when I was a child though, I went to a church with my grandmother. My grandmother went to church. She lived out here at first before she moved to Ontario. But when I was a child child, I went with my grandmother. But as an adult, that's when I came here. Was in the youth program for a while. I've met, I met Casey Price before. Like I've, I've, I was here. And then I was in other small churches too, ministering. Um, but I've been here a number of times. But I don't think that anybody would necessarily remember me. But I do. Yeah, it's yeah, it's big. I don't even think nobody remembers anybody. I don't even think you guys know everybody in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, but, that's, that's the I don't want to keep you guys too long, but the reason why I have brought that out to you is to show you. You see how accurate that prophetic word was? Yeah. It's it no, no it, see, it's no other book that can do. Now I can. You don't have time. I can go throughout this whole thing and show you even more if you had time. But I don't want to take you guys this time. But if I did have time for one more, I would show you one more. But I'll call you. You guys have a good day. God bless you guys. God All bless right, you sir. guys. I'm going to give you a call, brother. Right. That's what we're talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll give you guys a call. All right, now. God bless you guys. See, that's all we're trying to talk about. That's all we want to do. If, if, if they give us the time to actually talk, that's beautiful right there. That's all we want to do. Had a time to actually talk, dialogue, talk to our people. 